Velkommen og god dag alle sammen. Welcome back to the channel where we use the actual historical sources to speak about Norse magic and beliefs. And today we are looking at a very old um, Swedish source from medieval times and it tells us how uh, the act of casting lots for divination or guidance would have happened. Uh, so uh, some of you may have heard of uh, casting lots that the Vikings and the pagans um, use very often. We see a lot of mentions of these from the Viking Age and the Saga. Uh, and pagan times about casting lots and performing uh, divination or to make uh, difficult decisions. Um, so one mention of it in the sagas, I forget the name of the saga, but I'll, uh, I'll put that name up right here. But anyway, in this saga, it was an army of Vikings trapped on an island, and they were stuck there because there was no wind for the ships to sail away. Um, so the uh, what they did is they counseled the priest, or Gothi, in the group, uh, as it was called in pagan times, and uh, basically they had to decide which men to sacrifice so that the wind would pick up. So uh, it is said that they cast lots to decide which one would be sacrificed. I think they had to choose from uh, three different men or something like that. Uh, now whether or not that's true it's debatable uh, but for sure they used casting lots in pagan times. We know this, we have found these in archaeological finds, uh, we see it all over the sources but no source um, tells us how to do it actually. Uh, they just tells us that they practiced casting lots to make these difficult decisions. Uh, but if we look at a church book actually from a few hundred years later. It tells us exactly how to do it, and I'm going to read from it right here. It's a, it's a church book found in Sweden in the 1300s, so really not that long after pagan times. Uh, pagan tradition was still alive and well by that time. It just had to uh, be done in private. Um, anyway, here we go. And it was called uh, Kastalot, or uh, Dralot, as they say in Sweden. So it was called the exact same thing it was called in the Viking Age. Um, and it says basically to uh, cast lots for saints, like which uh, saint you should um, consult in your prayers or for guidance or something like that. You should pick three or more saints. You should carve each saint's uh, recognizable symbol. Uh, it just gives an example here. If for uh, Saint Olav, it would be an axe. Or you would carve a pentagram for the Virgin Mary. And um, um, uh, you would put this symbol on a thin, flat, short wooden stick. And you place all of these sticks in a small bag and draw a, one of these lots from the bag, one of these sticks from the bag. Um, and then uh, take a look at uh, which symbol it represents and then put it back in the bag. And when uh, the symbol comes up three times, then that will show which saint you need to uh, consult. So, th so basically, um, the first three symbols uh, that you draw up, um, that would tell you which one you should consult. Um, another version of it um, tells that you did the same thing. You carved out the same symbols on uh, some slightly longer sticks, and those were held in the hands by two people. And the third person then draws the lots and counts them in the same manner. So basically the same thing, except instead of a bag, you, you put it in a person's hand and you stick the symbol side uh, downwards. So that's about it. The mysterious act of casting lots in the Viking Age is told to us right there. So uh, the question is, was this practice uh, the same in pagan times? Uh, so in this book, it's clearly a Christian thing. Um, used to consult the saints. Um, it's, it's a very good question. Um, so pagan traditions and practices did not stop when Christianity came in. Uh, some of them were forced to go underground. Uh, some of the most spiritual things were outlawed and they were forced to be done in private, but people still kept doing them for uh, many hundreds of years after. Uh, some other things, kind of uh, semi-moderate, um, kind of half-pagan spiritual things, they were allowed to continue, but they had to be adapted um, to fit a Christian, uh, uh, you know, uh, Christian culture. So, uh, Galder is a perfect example from that, something that would be pagan. In pagan times, a pagan spell or a little charm that uh, called upon the Norse gods. In Christian times, it would be the same prayer, but you would make the prayer to Jesus or something like that. Um, so it had to be adapted. But some things, the things that were not super pagan and, and super spiritual, they did not have to change at all. Um, so I think it's pretty clear that this method of casting lots, um, it probably would not have been changed at all. It's not something that was obviously pagan. 
Um, it wasn't something that was really spiritual, really definitively pagan. It was just a simple matter of like casting lots of marking symbols on something and, and, and casting. It was just like throwing dice. Throwing dice <laughs> did not become illegal once the Christians came in. And there's no reason the Catholics would have banned this method of casting lots. Uh, instead, they would have used it themselves. So I'm sure this is the same. Um, uh, this practice is the same as how it would have been practiced in the Viking Age. So there we go. This is how we can start to realize some things. Uh, we can look at things that are missing from the sources um, in pagan times, but we can look at things later on in time to see uh, uh, what they could have been. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, try it out yourself if you'd like, but that's how the Vikings uh, practiced casting lots. Uh, vi ses nästa gång.